chapter 6 constant strain triangle element or is also known as CST. In this chapter, we wish to use finite element mode methods to solve this kind of problem by using 2D constant strain triangular elements. In this topic, the structure will be discretized by using triangular elements, which is a 2D continuum structure. For example, this rectangular shape, it can be discretized into triangular elements by creating this line so that we will have two triangular elements or we can create another line like this so that we will have four triangular elements we also can discretize this rectangular shape like this so that we will have three triangular elements in fact we can create any line as long as we can form a triangular elements. For example, this trapezium shape, we can discretize this uh, shape into triangular element by creating this line in this way or in this, in this way. If we would like to have two triangular elements. In order to form a triangular element, it requires at least three nodes so that it makes possible to create a triangular shape, for example, node 1, node 2, and node 3. These nodes are numbered according to counterclockwise directions, where when we put this point as node 1, then it must be followed by this point, node 2, and this point, node 3. Let's say, if we would like to choose this point as our node 1, then our node 2 should be this point, followed by this point as node, node 3. In fact, we can start at any point as our node 1, as long as it follow the counterclockwise direction. Besides that, at each node, there are two degrees of freedom which is the displacement in x as well as this, the displacement in y which denoted by u and v for example in this case node 1 we have u1 and v1 at node 2 we have u2 v2 and node 3 u3 and v3 in this cst element there are two types which is plane stress and plane strain that we will discuss in next slide. What is plane stress and plane strain? So in plane stress, we assume all the stresses that normal to this plane are zero. For example, in this case, we have plane X and Y, meaning that we assume the stresses in Z direction are zero. Besides that, the plane stress is only valid for components in which the z dimension is much smaller than the x and y directions. Some study has suggested that when the thickness is less than 1 over 10, the smallest dimension in x and y exists, then we consider that problem is a plane stress problem. So, in other words, the plane stress is normally used for a very thin structure, such as thin plate, thin disc, and etc. For example, like the figure shown in this, in this slide, where we have a very thin structure, the thickness is very small as compared to the dimension in X as well as the dimension in Y directions. While for plane strain, we assume all the strain that normal to this plane are assumed zero. For example, in this case, we have plane X and Y, so that all the strain in Z direction are assumed zero. So for plane strain, it's only valid for components 
in which the z dimension is much larger than the x and y direction. So in other words, plane strain is used for a very thick, bulky or very long structure that having a constant cross section, such as a structural beam, dam and etc. For example, in this figure, it shows that, let's say this is a plane uh, XY, and then as we compare to the, th the thickness of the structure, or the dimension in Z direction, is much larger than the X and Y dimension. So in this case, we assume this problem is a plane strain problem. Let's have a look on the example one. The figure below show the cross section of n infinite length. Here is the keywords solid trapezoidal block. Another keywords which dimensions as shown. The bottom face is fixed to the, to the rigid mold, while the left face can slide vertically. A constant pressure loading normal to the top front faces of 100 kilopascal is applied. The block is made of a material with Young modulus of 20 gigapascal and Poisson ratio of 0.4. So here is the XY plane. Okay, XY plane. In fact, he has a infinite thickness. Okay, infinite thickness. So the first question state the problem relevant to this case for the right parameter to be used. Meaning that in this case, we have to determine the type of problem, either plane stress or plane strain. As discussed previous slide, for bulky structure or long structure, normally the condition is plane strain. So in this case, the problem is a plane strain, where the keyword that show that this very long structure is infinite length. Beside that, we also can use the word block. Block can represent something that very bulky. So anything that long and bulky structure, then the problem is a plain strain problem. The next question for the same example is to model this problem using two triangular elements okay, only so as to give the most accurate solution. So there is a condition given to us to create or to discretize this structure so that it could give the most accurate solution. Sketch the model and label clearly all the relevant nodes, elements and degree of freedom. So here is our layout of our structure, which is a trapezium shape. So next we have to discretize it so that we can form a triangular element. So for this type of problem, the first thing what we have to do is to decide our reference point. So this one will be our uh, reference point where this at this point we will start our coordinate with 0, 0. And I put the, the notation for this structure to make our calculation easier later on as A, B, C and D as shown in this figure. So in order to discretize that could give the most accurate solution, the first thing that we have to do is to determine the status of boundary condition at each of these points. Let's, let's start at point A. So at point A, as it's been um, built in or fixed at the bottom here, so meaning that at this point it cannot move in x and y direction. That's why UA is 0, VA also 0. At point B, similarly, it has been fixed to the base, meaning that at this point, it can't move in x and y direction, so that the status is ub is 0, vb also 0. 
while a point C is a free it's a free point where it can move in X and Y direction so that UC and VC is a unknown lastly at point D okay at point D it can move in Y direction but it can't move in X direction as it's been blocked by this roller and this wall so in this case UD is 0 and VD is unknown so once we have determined all these status of an equation then only we can discretize this structure so that it could give the most accurate solution okay let's try the first one the question require us to use only two triangular elements therefore in this case there are two possibility in creating two triangular elements from this trapezium shape the first one is by discretize this trapezium shape by using line bd so that we will have two triangular elements element one and element two that fulfill the requirement of questions next is to determine either these two triangular elements could give accurate solution or not to do that one of the easiest way is by determining the number of unknown degree of freedom in every element so let's have a look on element one so in element one there is only one unknown degree of freedom which is vd that associated with element one so this unknown degree of freedom we call it as active degree of freedom so for element one there is only one active degree of freedom which is vd why for element two there are uc vc and vd the unknown degree of freedom that associated with element two so for element two there are three active degree of freedom so in total there are four unknown degree of freedom associated with this discretization so these four points meaning that later when we're going to calculate displacement the stresses and so on it will be based on these four points so this is for the first trial let's have a look on the second trial this time in order to create two triangular elements we're going to discretize this trapezium by using line ac similarly next we have to determine either these new elements could give accurate solution or not by using the same method we're going to determine the number of unknown degree of freedom in every element let's start with element one in element one there are uc and vc the two unknown degree of freedom that are associated with element one therefore for element one there are two active degree of freedom while for element two there are uc vc and vd the three unknown degree of freedom associated with element two so for element two there are three active degree of freedom in total there are five active degree of freedom or five points degree of freedom so we can notice that in this second trial by discretize this trapezium using line ac it give more points as compared to the first trial when we discretize the trapezium using line bd as we know that final element method is an approximation method and in any approximation method in general whenever we use more points normally it will give better accuracy or a better solution thus in this case we can conclude that for our next calculation step we're going to use this second trial discretization which is by using the line AC to create the triangular elements.